it's true, I've committed crimes against music and I'm going to tell you all about it in this video. Hi, I'm Ewan, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to share with you some music which I have written way, way, way back when MIDI was a relatively new thing back in the late 80s and I was merely about 10 years old and I've unearthed a whole load of music from the loft on cassette tape so I'm going to be using one of these today and I'm going to be showing you some of that music. We're going to go over it very briefly, talk about it and you can comment about it and I'm going to show you some really interesting unusual finds as well so keep watching till the end of this video. I think you'll be absolutely, well, hopefully amazed, enthralled. We can cringe together and we can find out all about the music together as well. So let's dive in. Okay, so you're going to hear a little bit of a whine, which is the cassette. Um, fortunately, I cannot get rid of that within this particular software, but I could if I wanted to take this into a DAW and to manipulate the sound there. But I'm just going to have a press play and see what we come up with. Press and play. So yeah, clearly I found a riff, enjoyed it, decided to improvise over the top of it. I have no idea when I wrote that, but must have been around 91. Now I remember this track. This track was called Air. In all its distorted glory. Oh wow. Yeah, I remember writing that one. One of the earliest ones I did. So I was quite heavily inspired with Danny Elfman. Seen Edward Scissorhands when I was quite young. Yes. I remember this one. Two chords. Good old cut, copy and paste. And I never knew how to edit mistakes, I just kept them in. <laughs> Yes, I remember that one. This is not the list I've got here. It's mad because I was getting into dance music around 12, 13 and I remember that 90s classic techno, four on the floor um, and this is all with one sound module, a Casio sound module, orchestra hit, that do 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 and I just, 
the uh, orchestra hit and I just went mad with it. I remember that. So young. Oh my word, as an 11, 12 year old just didn't all know how to correct mistakes or stop a tune. Let's carry on and listen to some more. I think this is called Sky Racer. Quite nice. Again, heavily inspired by the B sides of my Goldfields albums. So, the next one should be called Jive. Again, another copy and paste spectacular. <laughs> Check out that electric guitar sound. Yes, we don't need to hear much more of that one, I think. You get the idea. It's like a copy and paste, loop, 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 do a little improv over the top of the loop kind of thing. It's probably, I mean, I wasn't really into jazz, but I was not funny that improvisation with a, with a repetitive background was pretty good for improvising over. So I've done my wet wet, love us all around. Again, that will date to this tape quite easily. I really enjoyed arranging that, I really enjoyed the music, I enjoyed the music and I didn't see the film for many years until I'd heard the music. A lot of films at that time I really liked the music soundtracks. I'd heard the music soundtracks to quite a lot of films before I'd seen the films so I really got immersed in lots of different sounds. And one of my earliest CD memories was Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, I really liked that. That bringing the rock sound to orchestra, probably one of the earliest influences that I'd had there as well. So that was really nice. So I think really all this music is making me think, you know at the time I was so young but actually what kid has the opportunity to get access to equipment at that age whereas now kids have access to this equipment that's relatively in the palm of people's hands it's just they may not necessarily know how to unlock the ability to be able to use it and I think that's really important where there is opportunity and possibility it just needs someone to coach people through that process so hopefully that's part of what I'm able to do with this channel. Inspired, I think, by a bit of never ending story, maybe. Here comes part B. Okay, that was the end of it. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, little tunes I used to have in my head. Songs that were very chord 145. Ah. This is important, this one. So I wrote this when I was 12, 13, 14. Good one, four, five chord sequence. I had to write this for an ensemble in school. I wrote it in a stupid key so no one could perform it. Mm-hmm. 
It does have the sound of a dance track that was out at the time as well. My friends really enjoyed this one, but it just shows you that I had no access to notation software, that there's nothing like Sibelius, nothing like uh, any of these scoring softwares. So it was all done through Cubase Score. <laughs> it was a nice short little tune, and uh, yes, I was quite amazed of how well that was received. Um, I actually cannot remember if we actually recorded it in the end. If you've never been to this channel before, I help people help make their music masterpiece. And so through tips on sound libraries and little examples of short films and examples you can write for, through the way I approach things, hopefully you can get some insight and some excitement and try it yourself as well. So making music is something that should not be hidden or for those who think who have the skills, it's about just having a go and um, yeah, something amazing will happen. So And this was all written on a, an old Mac that had tw 12 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> Mental. You're going to hear all the music had a definite side section one, section two, section one structure. Real heavy influences from the Shaman as well. What do you think? the idea be again. Good old copy and paste. <laughs> wow. <coughs> Instrumental breakdown. Dog bark, big in the 90s. Think itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Lobby, you name it. Now a lot of the equipment I used to make this music, you cannot connect to an up-to-date computer. Again, there's that winning chord sequence and then add to that a nice melody. I don't think this is a long tune. See if I can try and unearth some of these old Cubase files I've got on a disc. 
yeah i didn't think that was a long one what a journey down some memories there now i have got so many more of these tracks and i've only just unearthed them so really it's a case of going through uh, an auditory memory lane and sort of thinking where was i what was i thinking what about these crimes crimes and mistakes that you would think would be so quick to change nowadays but way back when it was a bit of a struggle to think what, what was i doing especially do, doing doublings voices in each part or just clicking record like in what i'd heard and then improvising over the top i used to just get them down and i used to churn churn it's probably a good adjective I used to churn these out within an evening for about a couple of hours maybe and I used to save it and then move on to the next one and it was just yeah sometimes I would hit gold sometimes it would be utterly horrible and of course you've heard some examples of those I was between the ages of 11 and 15 so quite a formative teenage time when I was starting to get into musical styles and things I was discovering the prodigy I was discovering dance music I was discovering film music I was discovering Mike Oldfield I was discovering um obviously John Williams was a main feature through my life as well I hope this has been useful if it has please hit the like button down below and do subscribe I might do another one of these videos with some more hammy blasts from the past do let me know in the comments if you would like me to do that and uh, thank you very much for sticking to to the end of this video as well and if you would like to check out any of the links then do check out the description below i've got lots of things for you to get involved in communities you can be a part of opportunities and of course my social networks as well thanks very much for joining me today and i'll see you in the next one take care bye, -bye.